This episode was requested by my patron, Nikki Marie. So you want to compete. You want to be the very best, like no one ever was. Why is that bad? Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about how competition is killing your roleplay experience. Are you a great role player, but your peers just don't recognize your brilliance? Do you write awe-inspiring prose, but you can't keep a partner for more than a week? If these sound like things you're struggling with, it may be because you're more focused on competition instead of collaboration. And this isn't your fault. Our society sets us up to focus on competing with our peers instead of collaborating with them, and it starts early. Take grading, for example. Starting in elementary school, we're given a number that is directly equated with how smart we are. And what's the implied goal of school? It's to learn as much as we can so that we can be as smart as we can possibly be. That means that from a very young age, we're taught that our value is measurable, and further, that our value can be ranked against our peers' value. Grading teaches us that A students are objectively and identifiably higher value than C students. But if you think about this for half a second, it's clear that that's not true. But you know, it really doesn't matter whether it's true or not true. We are taught this at such a very young age that we internalize it. And even if you're somebody that knows it's not true, that internalization makes it come out in all kinds of crazy ways, including seeing something like role-playing, an activity that we do with our peers as inherently competitive. Not quite on board yet? Here's another example of how our world pushes us to competition. Social media. Social media companies make money by selling advertisements, and they also sell your data to advertisers so that they can turn around and advertise to you better. That means on social media, you are the product, the social media company is the producer, and the advertising firms are the consumers. So then how do social media companies extract value from their product? They try to keep your eyeballs on the website as long as they possibly can. And a big way that they do this is by tapping into that competitive urge that has already been put inside us by other parts of our society. So how do you win at social media? You win by getting the most followers, the most likes, the most whatever metric the social media company sets up on their platform to show you that you're winning. They know that you really want more arbitrary internet points so that you see that number go up and up and up. I saw this in action when I role-played on Tumblr. There were so many role-play blogs that literally never role-played. They posted lots of images or headcanons or other things that tended to get lots of likes and reblogs, and through this, they grew their follower count. And because their goal really was to collect followers and then other people would see that they had lots of followers, they would get all this praise for their writing ability, even though they literally never role-played. So why? Why did this happen? People aren't that dumb. Why would they message someone saying that their role-play was amazing when the only writing on their blog was like small head cannons? It doesn't make any sense. Well, think about it. These people had large follower counts and lots of interactions on the posts on their blog. Implicitly, that means the community is endorsing this behavior and marking this person as quality. And those praising these blogs weren't dumb. They were doing this so that their blog could get out to more eyeballs and they could grow their follower count in turn by being friendly with popular blogs. So the truth is, they were playing the game exactly as they should have, and they were being very, very smart. And these are just two examples of how our world pushes us towards competition. And once you start thinking about things this way, you'll see examples everywhere. So you want to compete. You want to be the very best, like no one ever was. Why is that bad? Well, it's not exactly bad, and it even works sometimes. Sometimes you go into a role play and you steamroll everyone with how quality your prose is, and they actually are impressed, and eventually they do start to like you. I can't deny that this is true. But it's still not a good long-term strategy. 
This can lead to alienating yourself from your peers or from the role play group that you've joined, because what will happen is people might sense that competitive edge in what you're doing and be put off and then not want to role play with you from that. People are very perceptive. They know when your goal is to be better than them instead of working with them. So it's only bad really when you're doing this via comparison to other role players. And in my experience, the worse your self-esteem, the more likely you are to kind of frame things in this competitive mindset and thought patterns. And then the higher your self-esteem is, the more likely you are to be focused on self-improvement, not really competition. Think about it this way. You can't role play by yourself. So if you see role plays as something to win and your role play partners as opponents to be defeated, then what are you gonna do when you're sitting lonely atop of the role play winner mountain? These thoughts and feelings will not consistently improve your role play experience. So don't compare your role play to other role players. Instead, compare your role play to the role play of your past self. And in this way, you can improve your role play without stepping on other people's toes during your journey. This is a better way to get more consistent results than what your competitive thoughts and actions will do for you. So if you're watching this and you're thinking, maybe this is part of my problem and I would like to get more consistent, better results when it comes to my role playing. So how do I fix this? How do you actually make yourself less competitive and more cooperative when pretty much everything in the world is telling us that the way to self-improvement is competition? Now, this isn't gonna be a surprise if you've been watching my channel for a while, but the answer is practice. Yes, I know, I'm not giving you the magic bullet to obliterate your competitive thoughts so that you can start over tomorrow fresh with a new cooperative attitude. But the first step to fixing this stuff is being aware of it. So let's talk about some of those competitive thought patterns and some thought patterns that you could use instead. If you find yourself thinking negatively about the overall quality of your roleplay partners, instead of thinking of them as worse than you, start thinking of just you two not being compatible. If you find yourself thinking that your character or your plot idea isn't getting as much attention as it should, instead start thinking about how you can give more attention to other roleplayers' characters and plots. They'll probably appreciate that and want to reciprocate. If you find yourself thinking every group you join sucks, start thinking about what you do value in a group and look for that specifically. If you're a mod or an admin who's struggling to get your players to listen and do what they're told, start thinking instead about why they're not listening or maybe what you're doing to incentivize their poor behavior and also what behaviors can you actually control. If you are deep in that competitive mindset, this is something that's going to take time to change. Thought patterns aren't some amorphous fog that you can just wave away with a fan. They are hardwired into the neurons, into the cells of our brains. And the only way to change them is to start practicing and forming those new bonds. It takes repetition and it takes time. So the best thing to do is start now and practice. So what do you think? Are competitive urges something that you've struggled with in the past? I know I have. Are they maybe something that you're struggling with now? Are you going to think about changing it now that you've seen this video? Let me know all of that down below. And of course, as always, don't forget to make it a great day.